Isn't this cute? Apple pie, chocolate candy cane, and gingerbread lip balms. All right, resist the temptation to get yourself or your loved ones uh, these jazzy lip balms. They, <laughs> Debbie Downer here, oh man, they can really turn into a, a major problem as far as irritant chelitis with the uh, fragrance that they add to them and the flavorants. Cinnamon in particular, as well as ginger, very irritating. I mean, if you eat cinnamon and ginger spiced foods, uh, you may experience some irritation on your mouth if it gets gets around your lips and stays on there. Like if you put cinnamon and nutmeg and ginger on your on top of your latte, for example. Uh, so yeah, just putting it on the lips constantly in a lip balm is definitely a setup for irritant chelitis. Plus, I bet these taste good. They have a little bit of stevia in them. So that's gonna tempt you to lick your lips. When you lick your lips, that deposits saliva on the surface of the skin of the lips, and that saliva evaporates and draws more water out of your lips and causes irritation. And as that water evaporates, the irritating fragrance ingredients and flavor and ingredients get sucked into the skin of the lips and set you up for an irritant chelitis. So when people ask me, can your lips become addicted to lip balms? Uh, no, <laughs> not exactly. But in a sense, you can develop a bad habit uh, of using lip balms, licking your lips because they taste good, and setting yourself up for an irritant chelitis uh, that does kind of cause you to want to use more of the lip balm. And the way it works is that, uh, let me just explain this a little more clearly. You use something like this and when you first put it on, it feels good. So you, you derive some relief from putting it on that's immediate. But the immediate relief that you experience is short-lived and there's long, there are long-term consequences to having the flavorant and the, and the fragrance in the product that can set you up for more irritation, dryness, and peeling. And so, and, and plus you want to lick this off, so that too sets you up for more dryness and peeling. So you have a, a behavior component that, that goes, that accompanies putting something like this on, which is licking your lips because it tastes good, and then it's got an ingredient in it that with time can be irritating. Uh, you, you have side effects from these that show up after, you know, with a delay and when they show up that leads you to put more on because you want to experience that immediate gratification so it's not like a, a it's not as though your skin is truly addicted to it it's just a disconnect between the immediate the immediate relief and the long-term side effects does that make sense so yeah best lip balm vaseline or cerave healing ointment and um uh, even, uh, you know, I don't typically mention Aquaphor because it has lanolin in it and a lot of people can become irritated by that. And personally, I just don't like it as much for, for me, but that is also another great option. I just don't, I just don't ever think of it because I personally don't like it, but um, it, is a, it is a useful one and it doesn't have flavorants or anything, but yeah, <laughs> skip these, long story short. Yeah, Burt's Bees has this little quad. It's so cute, right? And these are probably a lot of fun and taste good. And they, you know, they're they're really adorable packaging for stocking stuffers. Like I used to love this stuff when I was a child and getting things like this. Um, but uh, the Burt's Bees ones also, you know, are just as problematic. Just because they say all natural and organic, it doesn't mean they're any better than than the synthetic stuff. In fact, natural and organic stuff tends to even be more problematic. Um, vanilla, by the way, is a flavorant that can be very irritating. Um, so these have vanilla in them, and they also have, um, what else? Um, Linalu, limonene, and geranile. Those are, those are all fragrance. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know I've told you that putting putting fragrance on the thin skin of the eyelids puts you at greater risk for developing problems. 
if you put irritating stuff on the skin of the lips, because it's often moist from saliva, that too increases the um, risk of irritation. When you put ingredients on wet skin uh, that are irritating, the water and the irritating ingredient, uh, it compounds the irritation, so you, it's more problematic than if you put it on dry, thick skin. So, does that make sense? Happy Sunday, everybody. How are you? We're here at Whole Foods. I'm great. It's a beautiful day. So I'm just getting fruit today. I got a lot of berries, strawberries, raspberries, Ooh. and some citrus, grapes. And that's all I felt like having. Looks delicious. You got a chai tea today? I did get a soy chai latte. How is it? It's a little weak. <laughs> yeah. But it's good. Yeah. It's a nice change. Yeah. Um, you guys, last night we watched a movie on Netflix called, um, I'm gonna blank on the name, Butterfield, Butterfield 8. 8 with Elizabeth Taylor. It was really good, except it was pretty racy for the time. Didn't Very you agree? Much so, because, you know, her occupation was questionable. Yeah. And then her but they were history, pretty, yeah. but they were pretty open about it. Yeah, that was the thing. They were pretty direct about her occupation. In contrast, Breakfast at Tiffany's, it's kind of hinted and suggested what her mm -hmm. occupation is, but this they were pretty direct. Yeah, I'm glad we watched it because that's a movie that I remember <clears throat> from the past, yeah. but I, I, don't, I never saw it. And but I really like the um, interior decorating <laughs> in, the, in all of the apartments in, in the uh, movie from that time period. Yeah, I just I like really like what it. they used to call French provincial. Yeah, French. I like the, I like the pink tiles in the bathroom with the pretty glass bottles. I thought that was really pretty. And the in pastel colored telephones. Yeah, I like Ooh, that. Pink. Yeah. <laughs> so I got um, rice cauliflower medley that they is new. It's uh, just rice cauliflower with rice broccoli as well or little broccoli chunks. And then I got some roasted cauliflower. I mixed in edamame and almonds, raisins. And then uh, there's also a sweet potato piece and um, some dried apricots. And on top are black sesame seeds, white sesame seeds, hemp seeds, and chia seeds. There's also some raisins thrown in and cinnamon. And <laughs> I'm going to jazz it up even further with a few drops of liquid aminos. I enjoy this stuff, so that's what I'm having. And I just got an Americano as per usual. I'm over here in CVS over by the lip balms, and here's Aquaphor. So here's Aquaphor Healing Ointment Advanced Therapy for dry, cracked, or irritated skin. And I did not mention this in my um, ointments and balms for winter skincare. In that video, if you'll recall, I talked about how balms and ointments also can be used on the skin of the lips as a lip protectant. And many of you are wondering why I didn't mention Aquaphor. And personally, I mean, it's fine. It's frequently recommended. It's mostly petrolatum, which is a great skin protectant, but it does have lanolin alcohol, lanolin in it. And I have a video talking about lanolin, not necessarily a bad ingredient, but people do become, can become sensitized to it. And so herein lies the issue. When you start putting stuff like this on the skin of the lips with the moisture and the water from the saliva, it increases the chances of de developing irritation to the lanolin. And for me personally, I find that Aquaphor on my lips is very, very irritating. So um, specifically Aquaphor healing ointment for the lips, I don't get along well with. And that's one of the main reasons why I didn't recommend it in that video. However, Aquaphor has their Immediate Relief Lip Repair product for severely dry lips. And interestingly, this does not have lanolin in it. So I appreciate that. Um, you can, the ingredients in this though that you can become irritated by or, and or allergic to are going to be beeswax as well as castor oil. And of course CVS has their generic dupe of, of Aquaphor but it too has lanolin in it, so. I don't see that they have a dupe for the lip product. So I saw this O'Keeffe's Lip Repair product, the Cooling Relief Lip Balm. This is one where peppermint oil, that can drive a lot of irritation and lip licking and problems, so I don't recommend this one. 
it's not that your skin develops uh, an addiction to lip products. It's that in, in your brain, there it feeds into the reward reward pathway, and that you get immediate reward from using these types of products. But their um, negative side effects come about later, and it's their negative side effects that brings you back to them. So it is, in a sense, a bit of an addiction. Not just lip products that can cause chelitis, though. It's food, too. You know, certain foods. Fruits, in particular. Papaya. Kiwi. Citrus fruits. Limes. Lemons. All can cause chelitis. Spicy foods. And, um, particularly if you consume those in hot liquids. Heat, plus the saliva, plus the irritating ingredients really just draws a lot of water out of your skin and deposits those irritants in even further. Now the issue with lipsticks and um, lip glosses is that A, a lot, oftentimes, you gotta be careful, they may have added flavorance or fragrance, which I've already covered is irritating in and of itself, but they also inevitably have red dyes in them and red dyes have been associated with Acne Cosmetica, as I've said in other videos. It doesn't mean that everybody who uses pink makeups or red, makeup that's red is going to develop acne. Obviously, that's not, not true. Otherwise, everyone would develop acne when they use blush. But a lot of people do develop acne on the cheeks related to blush, and the ingredient that is suspect is the red dye. And that, too, will creep up in your lip products perioral dermatitis or those little acne-like bumps around the mouth and they that that skin condition can be related to skincare products that are irritating including lip products uh, you know there's some degree of transfer to the surrounding skin around the lips uh, pro possibly so it's they're not they're not without issue um, all right in addition to the red dye though the other problematic ingredient or ingredient that can be a problem, I'll say. Not always, but can become a problem in high shine formulations are gallates, G-A-L-L-A-T-E. Gallates make things glossy, and they can get a chelitis from their lip, lip glosses. See, the, the issue too with allergic contact dermatitis, if you develop an allergy to one of these ingredients, the issue with allergic contact dermatitis is in particular in the beginning, the rash does not manifest until a few days after you've been using the product. So a lot of times there's a huge disconnect between the user and the, and the uh, culprit. Um, you know, the culprit has left the scene of the crime, so to speak, when the dermatitis arises. So that, that can be a real, real challenge in recognizing what's causing, causing the issue. Ballistics Blistex has a few hits or misses as far as their lip products. This particular product is a miss. Uh, they're sucking you in with the word serum. You see how that's just a marketing word? We're going to put serum on this and get people to buy it. Yeah, um, this particular product has lanolin, uh, which I already mentioned the issue with that. But in addition to that, it also has a flavorant in it. Uh, so yeah, you want to avoid this on your lips. Yeah. Flavors. Flavors. What are we, a Dorito? Now we're going to do the song and dance of SPF lip balm, balms. I have a video on my favorite SPF lip balms. Really important to protect the skin of your lips with a sunscreen. A lot of lip products have sunscreen in, in them, which is great. Um, and, you know, I advocate using a dedicated SPF lip balm because uh, a lot of times the formulation of sunscreens for your skin, they don't set up particularly well or adhere well to the skin of the lips. So what can be an issue, however, with lip SPF is, a, is the type of active sunscreen ingredient. Chemical sunscreens on the lips tend to be more irritating than mineral. However, mineral sunscreen on the lips is going to leave a cast which people don't like. My favorite mineral lip SPF is going to be the Vanny Cream product. It does change the color of your lips through the white cast it imparts. I personally like the way that looks, but it's not for everyone. Uh, so this product is a chemical sunscreen by Ballistex uh, that does have, uh, have uh, avabenzone in it which will protect you against UV, UVA and some chemical filters for UVB but it can be irritating particularly on the skin of the lips. 
It also has dimethicone as an active ingredient, which is not an active sunscreen ingredient, but rather an active uh, skin protectant ingredient. Uh, so yes, it is uh, in effect an over-the-counter medication, uh, dimethicone, believe it or not, uh, despite the fact that the clean beauty industry would have you, have you think it's the devil. It is actually very safe and, and, uh, and effective as a skin protectant. Anyways, that's in there. And this particular one does not appear to have lanolin in it. Their Silk and Shine product uh, says it has a glossy shine, but I looked at the ingredients. It does not have, at least that I can tell, any gallates in it. Uh, so that's good. Yeah, no gallates. But uh, it does have saccharin in it. I guess that could potentially be irritating as a flavorant. Cause you to, to lick the lips more. Uh, and, and lead you down that path of, of lip, lip lickers dermatitis. Oh yeah, this has flavors. Again, with the flavors. You can get that Aquaphor uh, lip product in a stick, in a stick packaging as well. I personally think the stick and the stick packaging is nice for lip balms during cold and flu season in particular, uh, because uh, you minimize uh, touching your your face with your hands. That can pass back and forth cold and flu germs. Yeah, I mean everybody got mad at EOS back in uh, a few years ago because people were developing chelitis to this, but. It's not specific to EOS. They just kind of got busted, basically, because people really started developing problems to it. Uh, but EOS has the same arsenal of, of irritants as, as the majority of over-the-counter lip balms. So, you know, they kind of they kind of got caught uh, in the act. Uh, but it can happen to, to any of these, like this Nivea peach uh, the flavor. You know, peach tastes good and. Yeah, this also has the red dyes in it. So yeah, this is this is potential stick of problems. <laughs> just like the just like the little EOS ball there. Oh, ta-da! One of my favorite uh, moisturizers for rosacea is here in CVS, the Procure Rosacare. However, this Provent that's trying to be like Procure, I do not recommend um, because it has vanilla in it as well as lemon peel oil. Terrible idea, terrible idea, particularly for people with rosacea. Are you trying to make it worse, Provent? Where have you guys been? <laughs> Hydrate. Hydrate, ladies. Here's my mom's new holiday house ornament that she got yesterday at the Hallmark store. She collects these. Um, she has many <laughs> over the years, but they always have a little tree inside. That's cute. <laughs> then she also got the holiday keepsake ornament, Barbie ornament. We collect these as well. So she's got a little candy cane dress on that matches the American Girl doll. Little pants. Tybee is obsessed with my little Welly Wisher doll, Willow. He like, oops, <laughs> wants to bond with her all the time. <laughs> And she's got her little, her little deer out from, she got these at Dirt Cheap, but you can get them at Target. I mean, they're from Target, but they were at Dirt Cheap, so she got them at, like, a significantly reduced price. Oh, these are my mom's Christmas DVD coll collection here she has. These are my favorite, the Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Or I guess she has them here, the originals. She have it? Oh, it's a two disc set. That's what that is. And then, oh, this is a good one. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. She also has Love Actually. Of course, A Christmas Story. Christmas Vacation. I love this one. Home Alone. She has Elf. And It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, I feel like the 80s were some of the best uh, Christmas movies peaked kind of around then. There haven't been any good Christmas movies since maybe Love Actually. Um, comment below though and if you guys have seen the new, there's like a new Christmas movie out that has the guy from, um, I don't know his name, the guy from uh, uh, 
rich, crazy rich Asians, and then the gal from uh, from Game of Thrones. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm talking about if you watch either of those. But yeah, it's a newer movie, and I think it's from the creators of Love Actually, and it's kind of Christmassy. I heard it was corny, but you know, it's any any time there's a Christmas movie, there's a tendency towards corn. <laughs> I'm gonna make some granola. I've got this cute nutcracker apron on. You guys can see it. My mom has one and I have one. <laughs> yeah, I'm using I'm making the quinoa quinoa granola recipe from Minimalist Baker. I'll link it down below for you guys. Um it's just Rolled oats and white quinoa. And some other things thrown in. But according to the website, she says it has nine grams of protein in one serving. So I'm gonna add raisins. And the recipe calls for coconut sugar, which we don't have. So I'm just going to do the maple syrup like it calls for. Omit the coconut sugar. I'm going to add some cashews, too. First calls for almonds. I'm gonna add some hemp seeds. I'm basically not following her recipe at all. So <laughs> I'm adding a quarter of a cup of hemp seeds. And I'm also gonna add some flaxseed meal. It's kind of like that Cambria Joy's gluten-free granola I made um, in the past. It was really good. How much flaxseed meal should I add? I'm gonna add three tablespoons of flaxseed meal. I'm also going to add some goji berries. Everything but the kitchen sink. Some sunflower seeds. And some slivered almonds. And I'm gonna mix some coconut oil in the microwave to soften it. Recipe calls for three and a half tablespoons. Nuke it in the microwave. And the recipe calls for a quarter of a cup of is it quarter of a cup maple syrup. Yeah, one serving of maple syrup. So not too much sugar. Just one serving of maple syrup in the whole thing. Into the oven she goes. Also gonna make some chickpea patties. I just mashed in one serving of cooked uh, steel cut oats that was in the fridge. That was kind of cold. That's the, always the best binder of veggie burger patties I find. I'm just going to add in three tablespoons of hemp seeds.
And this is the Frontier Co-op pizza seasoning, no salt. This stuff is really good. All right, so I've decided to shake it up a little bit. And instead of making veggie burger balls, I'm gonna make like a focaccia. I'm gonna put it in this pie plate that I have, spritz with a little nonstick avocado oil spray. That's what it looks like. And then this is gonna be the secret ingredient. I took a teaspoon of maple syrup. I know this sounds odd. I drizzled it on the top and just kind of rubbed it all over. And a little bit of sugar will bring out the flavor in the tomatoes. All right, granola came out of the oven. I'm just gonna break it up here. Oops, <laughs> I was gonna show you guys and I threw it on the counter. <laughs> looks good. See how the quinoa kind of crusted on the cashew? Looks good. Mmm. How is it? Very good. Uh, no, raisins. We're watching, uh, this is Mr. Magoo's Christmas. Yeah. It's good. You said you used to watch this when you were little? I used to watch Mr. Magoo cartoons. This is a good one. It's basically a Christmas carol. Yeah, it's really good. That's what it is, Mr. Magoo's Christmas Carol. Oh, like that. Aww. Like that. Aww. Oh, he's little. Little friends. Don't worry, Tybee. They're not your replacement. I'm interviewing candidates so I can go off to college. Here's my uh, pizza focaccia. It actually looks pretty good. Um, it's just the chickpeas, hemp seeds. Uh, I took these cherry tomatoes. You get these cherry tomatoes at Costco? Yeah, uh, Kroger. Oh, Kroger. And I mashed them in when I was mashing the chickpeas. Mashed it all together. And then it's that Frontier Co-op pizza seasoning. And the cold oatmeal, steel cut oats, is, is the binder. You could probably use old rice or whatever. You only needed like a quarter of a cup. Or you could even use, like the cut, the oats were cooked and when you cook steel cut oats and then allow them to come to room temperature and store them in the fridge, they kind of congeal um, into this kind of cold brick. And so that works really well for a binder for stuff like this because it's kind of sticky. But you could probably just use any type of flour or almond, almond meal, meal if you wanted. Just a quarter of a cup. And then I just shredded some spaghetti squash. My mom has this Rayo's. Rayo's, I always want to call it Rao's. Rayo's homemade uh, sensitive, sensitive marinara. What is sensitive? Is that balsam of Peru safe? Probably not. If you have, there's a type of fragrance allergy, side note. Uh, due to balsam of Peru, and some people's balsam of Peru allergy ends up being so bad that they get what's called a systemic contact dermatitis. They become, quote, system systemized. And so if they ingest anything with fragrance in it, these same fragrance ingredients, they get a rash all over their body. It usually presents on the buttock area. Uh, it's called baboon syndrome. But they can have such a horrible rash uh, chronically that they have to go on this balsam of Peru free diet because balsam of Peru is a is a food additive and it's also f in fragrance. 
um, and it's in like soda, so in cola, it's in chocolate, a lot of, uh, I think, different alcoholic beverages end up having it, and uh, tomato sauces, balsam of Peru, and cinnamon. Yeah, once you develop an allergy to fragrance, it can be, it can, when I say it can make your life a living nightmare, it really can. So, um, yeah, I just chopped up a head of romaine for myself. I like doing things on a bed of roughage always. There's the spaghetti squash. Really looks like some sort of a noodle. Some of the tomato sauce. This looks like it came out really good. Just putting the veggie burger kind of mash into a pie plate and making it, I don't know, like a uh, omelet. And I took these little baby cucumbers and sliced them really thin and dusted it with nutritional yeast so it looks good i have the same thing except i put mine on a plate doesn't this look like spaghetti yeah it, does it really to me. does yeah and i'm excited to try the pizza loaf yeah bon appetit so um my mom has this follow your heart balsamic vinaigrette it's actually really good it um is uh just like a vinaigrette pretty good. So I have a little bit of that on my lettuce. Yeah, I just put balsamic vinegar on my green. Oh, yeah. You are, you yeah, that is that. very good. How's the uh, it's chickpea loaf? Yeah, this is really neat. Good. I think you could also, if you didn't want to have it flat like that, you could what? make it into a little um, meatball type. Yeah, thing. yeah. I just didn't want to get my well, hands all messy. I like the way it is, though. Yeah. LED candles look so nice. They're so inviting to come back to. And I put on my baseboard LEDs. <laughs> uh, except I think that one's on a on a different setting. I need to get them synced. Oh, maybe not. They're all in the same. Yeah, you guys were asking me how I tacked those on there. I just put them on with thumbtacks. Uh, so not the not the most uh, glamorous way to do it, but it gets the job done. And I'm just loving my tree. My mom and I were just talking. I think next year I'm going to get a smaller pink tree for in my bedroom and put all of the Barbie ornaments that my mom's collected over the years on that tree. Um, so maybe you guys will remind, remember and remind me to, to do that like sometime in November next year. You guys can be my little, weren't you going to do the Barbie tree? <laughs> that would be cool. Because um, my mom was like, I don't know if I want to put all of these out on my tree. Um, so we thought that would be a fun idea. Anyways. So yeah, I'm back and I just wanted to close out the vlog and tell you guys thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.